it is now time to hear from our county council, Stephen Madker. So we have, um, we've got about 25 minutes if we kind of want to stay on a fair schedule here. So how are you doing with that? Can you, you got half the time for presentation and half the time for Q&A. So, okay. I'm on it. There you go. Good, thank you. Good morning, members of the budget committee. I'm Stephen Madcor, I'm your county council. The Office of County Council consists of 10 full-time attorneys, one paralegal, one three-quarter time paralegal, and one administrative assistant. This is the equivalent of 12.75 FTE. Slide, please, Dylan. We are primarily funded through the general fund. As the graph shows, 67%. The remainder of our funding is charged through direct services, primarily through water environment services, BTD, the development agency, NCPRD, and the uh, risk fund. Slide, please. I am here on behalf of the office to request the budget committee support for an appropriation of approximately $3 million for fiscal year 2021. The request consists of a 90,000 or approximately 3.1% increase from last year. You will notice that there are no proposed cuts for the Office of County Council in the budget of 2021. And I will try to explain why. But first I will explain to you, try to explain what you get for your $3 million. Slide please. County Council Office provides full range of legal services to the Board of County Commissioners, all elected county officials, departments, and divisions. We provide general counsel and advisory legal services countywide, represent the county and its agents in state court, federal court, the tax court. We do labor arbitrations, land use hearings, administrative hearings, small claims court, and Currently, our office has over 50 active litigation files in one form or another. Along with those previously identified services, we also provide legal services to the housing authority, special districts operated by the county, such as NCPRD, water environment services, and the development agency. Legal work is divided among the attorneys by areas of specialty with leads and backups assigned to each subject area and to each county department. Our, our operations are broken down into three lines of business, which is county operations, litigation and labor, and the Office of County Council. Slide, please. Essentially, under each line of business, we have programs. We have advisory, regulatory, and transactional. We have labor and employment, we have litigation, and we have the Office of County Council, which handles the more um, general legal matters for the county. Our goals and performance measures are based on numerous factors, providing competent, prompt, efficient legal services to the county clients, to be proactive in our work, anticipating client needs, providing, uh, providing appropriate legal advice before issues actually become liabilities for the county, provide department specific and countywide training on critical legal matters, investigate and resolve claims and lawsuits fairly and reasonably while always taking into consideration the best interest of the county and improving efficiency with the utilization of electric systems, electronic systems for creation, processing, maintaining file information to reduce the reliance on paper and reducing resources. Can we have a slide, please? I'm gonna go another slide, please. And even one more. Those are our performance goals, which are new for this year, more manageable, more discreet, more easily tracked. We have some, uh, every department was asked to provide major accomplishments. We had a, a long list in my estimation, but I'd like to give a shout out to a few of our attorneys who have had particularly good success over the course of the last year. And that was uh, Sarah Foreman with defending the county in a very contentious lawsuit. She had great success with that, as well as Sean Lilligren as well. He got a class action case concerning strip searches um, dismissed at the federal court le level. Andy Maris is one of our newer hires. He does labor and employment litigation, and he's done a just an exemplary job with the, uh, the labor grievances and advising on employment matter. 
Of course, Nate Boderman does uh, land use, but he's also been doing a lot of transactional work for the development agency and uh, does a great job with that. We operate with a minimal level of expenditures. I've said this in the past and to this committee, and that is that we are primarily people, paper, pencils, and computers. We have an excellent office of skilled and dedicated staff. And we also, in my estimation, I've said this also, offer a uh, boutique law practice for Walmart prices. And with that, I'm here to answer any questions that the committee may have concerning my budget request. I've reviewed the questions that were submitted by the budget committee over the course of the last few days. And I do not believe any of them were addressed towards county council. I will offer that our office has had one hire within the last 12 months and that was filling a paralegal position which was created by way of a retirement. So there was a vacancy and a need. We did go through the um, hiring freeze process and we got an exception for that. So with that, I'd like to take any questions that the committee may have and I thank you for your time and consideration. We have Commissioner Savas. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Uh, appreciate your presentation and, uh, and the quality service you provide uh, the county. Um, I have a question and and I just want to qualify that that my question does not infer to um, any department or anyone um, uh, that this is a bad thing because um, these kind of departments around the state are always subject to a lot of claims against them. So this is no reflection on, on the sheriff's office, but uh, whatsoever. But my question is, uh, what percentage of your work do you feel is um, related to the sheriff's department claims, claims, tort claims, and so on? Um, I, I know it's probably one of the incalculable things when we look at the sheriff's budget at times, and I know it's not always the same. And I forgot to ask uh, Human Resources when Eric Machado was available. I forgot to ask him what amount of um, uh, effort is put there and resources out of the risk fund to sometimes make good on some of those obligations as a result of a, of a claim against us. But uh, with that, I'll just kind of pose it from, from your office perspective. Uh, what percentage of your work is related to the Sheriff's Department? I, I think, Commissioner, that the Sheriff's Office is the uh, one of the largest consumers of legal services in Clackamas County. And it's not probably unusual than any other public entity of this size. With the litigation group, it's probably 60% of our litigation court and employment is devoted to claims coming out of the sheriff's office. Sheriff's office also consumes, um, requires legal assistance for labor grievances, for labor bargaining, for labor advice. Sheriff's office also gets a lot of uh, legal services with respect to public records law and other general advisory matters. So I would say our numbers are probably consistent with Multnomah County, Washington County, Lane County, Marion County, in terms of the demands placed upon in-house counsel by the Sheriff's Office. In our annual um, County Council report, which isn't out yet, but it typically identifies the Sheriff's Office as being the, um, a significant user of, of legal resources. Yeah. And, and I just want to, again, just, just reiterate, this is not a ref, uh, reflection or a negative reflection on the sheriff's office, just the nature of the business. Um, I'm reminded by uh, Mr. Bernard's background um, to ask this question, you know, realizing the jaws of death are typically when uh, you see the expenses outpacing uh, the revenues. Um, but uh, do you feel that your uh, office is, uh, um, what's the word, um, structurally sustainable? or structurally, um, what was the word yesterday? Pardon me. Balance. balance, structurally balanced, thank you. Well, I, yes, I, I do. I think that the comparator for the county, for the Office of County Council is kind of easy. You pay us or you pay outhouse council, and it would probably be two to three times the rate. So we've had experiences with um, outside counsel before, as you know, Commissioner, where one case can cost $200,000 uh, defending one case, let alone, you know, 15 cases or 20 cases. So um, 
our expenses are people. Our other expenditures are as minimal as necessary. Copy machines, printers, allocated costs. Our travel budget is de minimis. We are exploring the possibility. It's a more of an internal conversation of upping the rates for county council and paralegals. We're currently $126 an hour, whereas the Portland metro area is probably $275 to $500 per hour for, for uh, um, private attorneys. And that would involve uh, paralegals as well as legal counsel. And that would um, potentially you know, subsidize or augment the delta between general fund and the charge fund. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Humberston. Actually, Stephen, you answered my question, which was for the public's benefit. The, oftentimes people want to say, why don't you contract out those services? And you de demonstrated clearly how much more expensive it would be to contract out all of our legal services for all of the legal work that has to be done in-house. So uh, thank you for um, making that point clear to the general public. You're welcome, my pleasure. Commissioner Bernard. Uh, Stephen, I wanted to thank you for correcting me this morning in an email. And that is that the OIR report was done uh, to evaluate the issue with Detective Green's failure to investigate cases, including child abuse, his subsequent retirement and perceived cover up that led the BCC to hire OIR. The murder, the three murders that uh, in the Green case homicide was mentioned in the report but it was not the reason. My question to you uh, is actually, you know, uh, one outside attorney won millions of dollars for the county on the forest issue. When can we anticipate that we'll get that check? I, I um, can only offer that the matter is under appeal at the Court of Appeals. And we heard from John Lorenzo, who represents the class uh, action plaintiffs um, when he came to the, the county and briefed us. It's potentially a long process, but as he stated, the interest is, I can't recall what the number was, it was astronomical. Um, but I, I can't estimate on that. The, the appeal process takes a long time. Uh, so uh, should we start spending the money, though? Pro probably not. I don't advise that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your advice, and I accept thank it. Commissioner Humberston. Uh, uh, thank you, Commissioner Bernard. You reminded me of something that uh, was part of our discussions on that particular uh, forestry lawsuit back six or eight months ago. We put on the table the idea of rather than accepting a cash settlement, which would probably get negotiated down from the, where it is currently, uh, that the state turn over the, the lands that are under consideration in our county to us and the other small landholders of other counties, leaving the half a dozen counties with large land holdings to deal with the state separately. Now that the budget situation at the state level is probably going to have some difficulties, do we want to revisit that offer? Because the long-term ownership of that land and, and the long-term um, ability to, to realize income from that land with our superior uh, harvesting techniques uh, actually generationally speaking would be much more advantageous to this county than a single check in the mail so to speak could is that something the board would like to reconsider because i think we ought to take a look at the possibility we can certainly discuss that at tuesday's executive session if you would like I think I think I would. I, I realize that's not exactly part of this budget discussion, but uh, didn't want to lose track of that idea. Good idea. I do not see any other um, hands raised or whatever. And Stephen, I was just looking back through the information in our book, and um, also want to commend you for the fact that in the years eighteen and probably before that. Your budget has remained almost flat all the years and your staffing has remained pretty much the same. And so 
kind of thank you for that. You know, um, it's much appreciated that you run a very sustainable department. So thank you. Thank you. And a very, very necessary department, obviously. So thank you for that. It's very much appreciated. So. Thank you.